So someone had recently reached out to our office. They're interested in a high cash value life insurance policy, a whole life insurance product, maximum cash value was the goal. They had a specific funding scenario in mind, or I should say they had a range. They stated, I know I can pay $20,000 per year toward the policy. However, I would like the policy set up so I can pay up to $50,000 per year. So the individual knew exactly how much he could pay in, no problem, the 20K per year, but he did want some window room to continue to be able to feed the beast. Because we know with the whole life insurance policy, the more we add to it, the better it gets, and the longer we have it, the better it gets. What everyone hates about a whole life insurance policy is the first year because that minimum premium often does not show up in cash value with traditional life insurance products. So to provide a little bit of background on this individual situation, he is 52 years old. His plan, as far as funding the policy, he wants to pay into it for a maximum of 15 years. So that'll get him close to the age of 70. And in 15 years, he'll be 67 years old. Now, he mentioned what his minimum commitment is as far as the minimum amount he's very comfortable paying into the product, which is presently $20,000 per year. However, he wants the ability to pay up to $50,000 per year. So when it comes to the policy design, so if this is you and the maximum you want to pay toward the policy is $50,000 per year, and you can choose where your money goes, it can go toward the insurance premium or toward the PUA rider. How much, let's just start with the $20,000, the amount you know you can hit. How should that be broken up? Because premium dollars, what happens with premium dollars? Well, often in the first year, and you're going to see that in the examples we look at when we pull up the actual numbers, first year, zero or a very small percentage of the premium shows up in cash value. That's also the amount I'm billed for each year. So it is an amount that I have to pay at least initially. If I do things right, I can stop funding after only a, a couple of years, typically two to three, but initially I do have to pay that premium. So the first year, nothing shows up in cash value. However, beginning the second year, I see those premium dollars show up in cash value, but still that's going to take the biggest bite out of my total payment. That's why we'll have a loss in the first year and it'll take a couple of years to recoup it. So again, the question is, with that $20,000 per year commitment, how much should go toward the premium? Well, should it be all of it? $20,000 because he knows he can commit to $20,000. And then that leaves him, if he wants to pay a total of 50 grand toward the policy in some years, well, he can pay what? Another $30,000 per year toward the PUA rider, which immediately shows up in cash value. So he can commit to an amount that he knows he can hit and then add another 30 to it. I would not do that. <laughs> if it was me, I would definitely not do that. Here's what I would do in this particular case. So what's the maximum he ever wants to pay into the policy? Let's start there. That's the most important piece. 50K is the max. That's the total desired amount. So based on the rules of the game, what are the limits the insurance company offers? So with the companies we considered, you'll see shortly our Mass Mutual and Guardian, we can drive that minimum base premium to 10% of the total desired payment. So if I want the ability to go up to 50K, I want my premium at 10%. I can actually get that a little bit lower in some cases, but we're gonna, going to use round numbers here. $5,000, that minimizes the upfront hit. It also minimizes the commitment. So he said that he wants to commit to at least $20,000 per year. Now he's only committed to five. However, if he says, well, I still want to make sure I pay $20,000 every single year, like I'm into self-discipline, that number, I want to get into the policy. This way I can almost treat it as if it's forced savings. So what you can do in that case, or what he can do in this case, is as follows. You can schedule $15,000 per year to go toward the P-Way rider, which will see somewhere between 90 and 95% of that show up in cash value immediately. But now he's got a scheduled amount of $20,000 per year. So he's paying 20K per year. He's treating it as if it is a bill, forcing the 20K per year. This is flexible. So if we want to reduce this, we easily can. And he also has window room to throw in an additional 30,000 into PUAs. And then the 30 plus the 20, 
would give him what? 50. So now we've got a very flexible policy, but when it comes to the overall design, where I will always start is with this question. How much do you want the ability to pay into a policy on any given year? Then just knowing the limits, the rules of the game, call it limits with different insurance companies, we'll design that policy with a low base premium to minimize the commitment and mainly minimize that negative hit because this takes the biggest bite out of cash value, especially if you like the guarantees, the higher the premium, the lower the guaranteed values will be every single time. So we mentioned that he is between Mass Mutual and Guardian, or at least that's where we're starting. So with these two companies, two of the four major mutual companies, and we use them a lot at our company, Insurance Business Concepts. So looking at these two companies, when it comes to flexibility, this is the big thing. Specifically, what is the flexibility in payments regarding PUAs? So his minimum commitment is what when we look at this? 5K minimum base premium. With the ability to add up to 50K per year. So I'm only obligated to five, a little bit more with a term writer. We'll go through the exact illustration. However, what do we want to look at here? Well, what are the rules of the game? Mass Mutual, as a company, will allow a policyholder to make PUA adjustments one time per year, every year, without any underwriting, provided that PUA adjustment is made on the policy anniversary date. That's the premium due date. So, for example, what I can do very easily is, let's say the first year, he pays in $20,000. The next year, he says, hey, things picked up. I'd like to throw in $50,000. We'll assume that he has a policy date of, let's say, October 1st. October 1st of each year is when he can make that adjustment without any underwriting. Say for the next three years, he scaled payments back down to 20K. And then year six, he wanted to increase payments again. He can do that if we have things set up properly. Specifically with Mass Mutual to do this, what we want to look for in the illustration is this guy. We like to use a combination of Ehler and Lisser. They're both PUA riders. Lisser stands for Life Insurance Supplement Rider. That's a combination of their uh, one-year term rider plus PUAs. Ehler is just a pure PUA rider. This has somewhat limited flexibility. There is some flexibility here. If you'd like full details, I would check out part two of our All About Mass Mutual series um, or a video. But to have that flexibility where we can just bounce payments up and down without underwriting at any point in time, there's no rules or anything we have to be aware of. We just have to make sure terms still attached to the policy one time per year on the anniversary date. Very easy. Guardian, on the other hand, what he can do is commit just to the minimum premium, that and the cost of the term rider, and then 100% at leisure, he can just throw money into PUAs. So for example, if he wanted to pay just the minimum or perhaps it's the $20,000 per year, if that's what he's scheduling, committing himself to, what it involves when he wants to add more funds into PUAs, is he would just log on to a portal, it could be through his mobile app as well, and he can just throw money into the policy. Whether he hits the maximum of 50, hits another 20,000, it's completely up to him, but that flexibility is strong with Guardian. However, there's some other things to be aware of. If he wanted to do something like this, 50K per year for 15 years, because he wants to fund it for how long? 15 years, and let's assume he ends up maxing it out. It could happen, especially as he looks at everything. Mass Mutual's product and how you can design their policies will accommodate a design like that. Whereas Guardian's sweet spot would be something if he if he followed a schedule, something like this. Let me max fund it at 50K per year. I'm going to do that realistically somewhere between three and seven years of the policy. The other years I'll hit 20, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. But to do 50K every single year, in order to do that with a Guardian product, we'd really have to increase the term rider, the base premium, we could keep right around 5K if it's a 15 year scenario, but it's not quite as attractive. So. With that said, let's look at some actual scenarios here. Beginning with Mass Mutual, what do we notice here? Let's make this a little bit bigger. 
That's better. On the left, what do we see? 50K for 15 years. In the middle, 50K for four years. And on the far right, 20K for 15 years. Let me rephrase the middle. 50K for four years and then 20,000 years five through 15. <laughs> but what I'll say about this, it's all the same policy. So we've got a sample here, exact same policy, but demonstrating different what if scenarios. What does my money look like or my policy look like if I pay in different dollar amounts as the years pass? Max funding always looks fantastic. Here we go, 50K per year. Breaking even, right at year five, starting at age 52. He's paid in a total of 50K. I mean, I'm sorry, 250K over five years. He has $250,000. And over 15 years, he's paid in 750. And he's got about 970, then just lets it ride. Example to the right, the center example. 50K in, 43,903. Look at the fourth year here. And then scroll your eyes to the left. Let me know if you notice any difference in values here. Cash value and death benefit for that matter. None. The reason why is because we've got the exact same policy but different funding schedules. Where you will see the difference is beginning year five here where we kick the funding down to 20,000, still breaking even year five, so I paid in 220 and I have a little bit more than 220, but now I'll see a difference here because I'm paying different dollar amounts in. So as time passes, the dividend rate will adjust. His funding may adjust as well. And we want to track the actual performance of a policy, not just hypotheticals like what we see here. But this does provide a little bit of insight as to what things might look like if I vary my payments, which people have appreciated just from working with individuals. I know I like to look at the stuff when I'm playing around with different models. And then on the far right, same policy, Ability to pay up to 50K per year. Death benefit's a little bit less because we have less money going into PUAs, which do buy you some death benefit. So that's why that's a bit lower. But the initial design, the base premium, term riders attached, everything else is the same. Just less going into PUAs. There's the cash value, break even point. Not that attractive. If he looks at this and says, hey, is there any way to make this better? The answer would be yes where we could design this with a $2,000 minimum premium and a $20,000 max. However, what you trade up in that case or what you trade is your max would be 20K. So then you give up the right to pay up to 50K per year. So we hit on that a little bit in our last video, but that's where we like to look at those different what if scenarios because this is people's money we're dealing with. We've got to be upfront with the different scenarios. Not overwhelming, but enough information where like, okay, Thanks for telling me that, so I know not to go down that road. I'm gonna keep on this road. <laughs> Let's take a look at the illustration with Mass Mutual before we just jump to Guardian. So here we go. What do we notice when we look at everything? Top left, we see coverage and a lot of columns or a lot of terms. Base policy insurance, LISR, scheduled ailer, renewable term. <laughs> Here we go. So the base policy insurance represents the initial whole life policy. There's the death benefit. And where we came up with that wacky number, 84,000 and change, is because instead of me saying, here's how much a whole life policy will cost, he said, here's how much I wanna pay in. So we specified what the base premium is, $5,000, which just naturally buys him an 84, almost $85,000 whole life policy. And then what we do is add these additional riders. We see term insurance attached here. Purpose of that is to add more death benefit, which gives him a MEC limit of 50K. This way, we don't have to worry about a taxable event, a MEC specifically. But we've got the different riders here. Total net outlay is 50K per year. There's the total cash value in the first year, about $44,000. And this is the example with 50 for four years. And then the 20K payment in the fifth year, I've paid in 220 and I have 220. What do you notice about the death benefit in year eight? This question comes up sometimes. Why did it drop here? So here's our term insurance rider. Cut it after the seventh year. 
showing 20K per year. And this would be something we would discuss before we just cut this term rider because what happens with this, if we cut the one year term rider, we give up that ability to adjust payments one time per year without underwriting. That rider does give a lot of flexibility with mass mutual policies. So that is something we're going to have a discussion around and then re revisit it every year. Someone says, I still want the ability to make catch up payments or throw a lot into the policy. We keep it on and we like to show what does it look like if we keep it on and don't capitalize, we don't add more funds versus something like this or adding more, we can see everything then. But that is important. I want to add that there and not skip over it. Um, if you're in the neighborhood of, hey, just take care of it for me, we do that for most people we work with. <laughs> All right, let's continue on. And let's take a look at Guardian here. So what you'll notice with Guardian, the first example is a little bit different. Remember what mass was? 50K per year for how long? 15 years. What do you notice with Guardian? 50K per year for four years. And we could go longer. We could stretch this to just about six years. I can make some tweaks here by just slightly increasing that death benefit, but without changing the initial design or very minimal changes, we can stretch that 50K for about six years before that term rider burns out. But here, Funded at 50 for, for four, and then 20, beginning year five. And this can adjust too. So this is Guardian. He could pay the 20 each year, and then just throw in additional funds to PUAs at discretion. And we would track the overall payments and the performance too. But here, just a level funding schedule, aggressive initially, and then cooling off to 20. And he can cool off to five if he wants to as well. But healthy break even point, year five. Then the same thing over here. So look through the fourth year. Do you notice any difference by year four? No. 200 in, 193 in cash value. I pay in nothing year five. Cash value appreciates to 200 and change, almost two and one. 201, that is. And it continues to appreciate over time. Then we've got the exact same policy but with only 20K per year. Let's wrap up with that Guardian illustration. So what we've got here, top right, $5,000 minimum premium. Next, PUA rider, scheduled. We would make it unscheduled in reality or you would just schedule the uh, $15,000 this way, 5K base plus 15,000 toward the PUA payment. What I'll also add is whatever your scheduled PUA payment is with the Guardian policy will cover the cost of your term rider as well. So people that say that we work with that say, I want to commit to the absolute minimum. This way it never feels like a burden and just plow excess funds to the, into the policy at discretion. They'll commit to the base plus the term rider will round up to the nearest, nearest thousand. So call it 6K per year. And then at discretion, just add more funds into PUAs on an unscheduled basis. Whether you add it all at the beginning of the year or over the course of the year. But there's your two death benefits. There's the whole life death benefit. There's the term rider. Add the two together. You've got the 800,000, which gives me the MEC limit. Of about 50K for this example. And here we're paying in 50K per year. This will match the Excel spreadsheet. There we go. Looks good. And then as we compare everything, I mean, a lot of times we'll look at it side by side, go through pros and cons as far as maximizing the cash value and flexibility. And then phase two is how he wants to use the policy. That one involves loans as far as modeling what loans actually look like if he borrows and pays back, borrows and pays nothing back, pays the interest only, seeing those different scenarios, and then also income down the road. If he says, hey, what does it look like if I want to turn an income stream on? Guardian's got that fixed loan rate. Mass Mutual has a variable loan rate, but a fixed loan rate option as well. Just provide education on the important items there, um, whether that's in person or through videos that we have. A lot of times we do provide that, but just looking at the different steps. Um, but typically one will narrow things down from a funding perspective first, because where, where people have buyer's remorse, and I'll wrap up with this, where buyer's remorse pops up with whole life insurance when cash value is the main goal, 
Because often when someone gets a policy, they thought it was designed for maximum cash value and find out after the fact that it wasn't. So how do I set it up where it truly is maximized for cash value and flexibility? And then once I've got that maximized, how do I use it to the fullest degree? So with all that said, I do hope that this video was helpful. If you enjoyed it, uh, please hit the like button and subscribe for more. And as always, I hope this helps. Thanks so much. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.